Okay, I am back in on my phone uh, as well as on my screen, guys, and you are being recorded, so you guys can start whatever, whenever you want. Okay, I want somebody else to be moderator. I'm taking notes for as long as we have a connection here and don't run out of power. But somebody else may have to file minutes because I'm out of town and I won't be back for a while. Karen, I'm taking notes. I can follow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I could be called away any minute here, so. All right. I'll moderate till I'm gone. <laughs> All right. All right. Corrections and approval of the minutes of June 1st. I'll make the I'll make the um, the motion to approve the minutes, Lucille. Second. Anybody? John. Yeah. John? I'll second. <laughs> John, we couldn't hear you. Oh, I said I'll second. All right. Any uh, changes to the agenda? All right, correspondence. Um, I have that later in the whatever I had. Anybody else get anything they want to talk about? No. Nope. Oh, I didn't see the agenda, so I apologize. Is it on there about the um, the trailer? Yeah, we'll talk about that. Okay. Um, finances, Charlie. Do you want to add anything? I don't have an update. I'm sorry. <laughs> You should I have, um, you should I have community another. comments or whatever, but nothing till then. Um, well, should, should be getting another 250 from Walmart uh, as soon as it, uh, Marie or Orla should have put it through, and hopefully you have that within the month. Thank you, Brian. Carrie. Now, citizens' comments. Leanne, was that you? Karen, do you want to approve the minutes? You only had a first and a second. There was no. Uh, thank, thank you. You're All welcome. in favor of, of approving the minutes? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. All right, Leanne, did you have say you had um, citizens comments? I just wanted to let the committee know that we are in the process of assessing um, the airline state park trail in the Thompson area. Um, and we have done Riverside Park, but I need a, a high resolution town of Thompson logo. If you could just email it to me at the office, Lyanne at tlgv.org, that would be great. All right, that's I can probably get that for you, Lyanne. The town you. of Thompson, not trails. The town of Thompson, yes. Um, well, Riverside Park one would be the town of Thompson, correct? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. The airline state park trail. We already have that logo. Okay. Tara, you're going to take care of that. Yeah, I can. That's fine. Um, I guess Excuse I will me. add under, yes. I'd like a clarification because Karen wanted to know, uh, Leanne, do you want the Thompson Trails Committee logo as well because of the uh, Riverside, uh, you know, any park that's not the airline trail or any trail that's not the airline trail, we, we've got some connection with it, including that one, by the way. So did okay, you only sure. want the Town of Thompson logo or did you want both? Both would be great. Thank you. I probably I probably have them both, Lyanne, and if I don't, I'm sure I can get it easily enough. Thank you. Um, I, I was just going to add under citizens' comments. It's sort of an agenda item later, but not exactly. Um, the Eastern Region Tourism District, of which I am a board member, uh, has finally approved moving forward with the match program for uh, regional tourism entities. So um, that 
I have been pushing, uh, as you guys all know, that Z fold map brochure thing as a uh, a joint project for towns on the airline trail in the eastern region. So that's that's seven of the twelve. Um, I always forget two of them, but you know Thompson, Pomfret, Putnam. Wyndham, Colchester, and I can never remember the other two that actually fall within our region. Um, that was finally officially rolled out last week while I was on vacation. Uh, and I uh, emailed the press release over to Jean Davis for Connecticut RC&D um, to start really pushing that forward. Uh, I'm not going to be able to be the lead on it. Airline Trail has to be the lead, but you guys have all seen the um, the specialty project I've been, uh, product I've been talking about. So uh, hopefully this will actually get that spurred on. So to clarify, that's a match program that the tourism district is going to provide a match with whatever the airline 12 town task force comes up with right so in the last fiscal year um ecd had uh voted to put aside forty five hundred dollars towards the project and uh in a subsequent meeting where maureen nicholson was in attendance from pomfret she had indicated a general willingness to go in about four grand herself uh, I haven't spoken there since we went into lockdown about it, but the, the program wasn't official then, so it didn't make too much sense to follow up on it aggressively. Um, I think it's a maximum match up to 25 grand. Um, so if in the seven towns in the district, uh, we can come up with a total of 25 grand to put into it, uh, that actually gets you quite a bit of print material and distribution, uh, I, I think, and, and that's part of what we have to work out. Um, so I'll have to be in touch with Jeannie Davis to make sure that, you know, we're still in the position to move forward. But I know Wyndham is looking at it. Um, the economic development um, director for Wyndham, Jim Bellano, happens to be the uh, the the chair for ERTD. So, you know, it's something we've been talking about now for a few months. So, I, I, although it all moves more slowly than we'd like, I think it is, in fact, moving forward. Okay. And, um, we're up to trail updates. Um, can somebody reiterate for everybody else? the work that was done on the airline and the pedestrian crossings and the crosswalks. Um, what do you mean by the work, the cutting that they've did? Yeah, update everybody where we are. All right, so um, last I checked was a little bit over a week ago, but I don't think it's changed. Um, the mowing has happened from uh, Mechanicsville all the way to Lowell Davis Road. Correct, and it hasn't gone for hasn't gone any further than that. Um, somebody cross, cross somebody cross. around the Lowell Davis gate heading the other way, but they didn't do anything further. Oh, I trimmed that over by the gate on the other side. Oh. Okay, great. Um, just because I know they don't get too fussy by the great gate, and I wanted to open it up if they were going to go down there, so I weed whacked all that. Thank I, you. I also weed whacked at Mechanicsville, um, the parking lot to the kiosk you couldn't even hardly walk to it so uh, i probably got to go up there and check it again and see how it looks now but i i weed whacked all that whole parking lot um the road crossing signs there's one at um east thompson road there's one on uh sand dam road um i have not i don't believe there is one on uh, the uh, sunset in lowell davis i didn't see there's nothing yeah. there and nothing. then uh, what is it, 197 at the other end by Mechanicsville? There's What's nothing, the one by Mechanicsville? Nothing what, I always mix that up. 193. 193, but there's nothing there either. And I think that's because that's a state road. I don't think it's a, uh, a town road, so I don't think that they can do that. I'm not sure, but. I don't know. Somebody painted uh, similar lines across that uh, 193 at 200, so. I don't know if the state has to do it or if the town can do it, but um, it's good that we're getting some progress. 
uh, that's all that I know of as far as that other work that was done on that. Any we, other? I, I do. Um, I haven't been able to see, but behind the Knights of Columbus, I think everybody knows we had a significant brush fire. It was not near the trail, but DEP firefighters have been up there. I, I, I don't know if they're still up there. They were up there for a week with bulldozers and doing all kind of work up in the mm -hmm. air with the fire to uh, keep it from spreading. It was really deep in the ground. So really the only thing that's going to put it out is a, um, uh, a lot of rain, which we have coming, but um, they were also supposed to, from that area, is cut a road all the way down to the river so that we could get water supply up there. I haven't been up there to look and see what that looks like or if they've, they've had four bulldozers up there, so I know they did a lot of work. I have not got to see it yet. Did I see Amy St. Ange here? Does she know? I'm sorry, what was the question? Is Amy on here? She is. She's asking you what the question is. Do you know about the brush fire work? Anything we need to know? In regard to the brush fire, as far as what are you asking? Well, I think she's asking about DEEP was supposed to, they, they told us that they were going to cut a road, not a road, but like a path from where the fire was to the river, which that would go across the trail. Right. I, just, I have not spoken to them about the work that they did. Okay. But I but I could and I could I could certainly send everybody a message. Okay. If there's any trail repair that then needs ha to happen or clearing, we should be apprised of that. Okay. I can I can definitely find out for you. Okay. And I can take a walk up there and look. I just didn't want to get in their way because they've been doing work with bulldozers and stuff and they don't need somebody walking around up there in the way. So that's why I haven't checked it out yet. Got it. Are there any other trail updates? And do we have just a general idea whether the porta potty is working out with no problems? Yeah, this, this is Paul. Times. I was down there the other day putting some pamphlets up and I've checked it maybe three, four times throughout the last month or so. And it seems to be uh, pretty good. Uh, it's nice and clean. It's stocked with toilet paper and, and hand sanitizer. Uh, and it looks pretty good to me. So it looks like they're taking good care of it. Great, thank you. Um, events. The... Oh, sorry, Karen, this is Leslie. Yeah. Um, this isn't a trail update, but um, in case you didn't see, I just recently shared on the um, REC Facebook page, there was an article that was put out that was the top five um, hikes in Connecticut, and the airline trail, of course, was labeled as number two, but specifically um, a section in Thompson um, was mentioned. So if you haven't seen that, um, it just was a really nice little article. I can email the link to that as well to this group. So Great. On the Facebook page. You shared it, Tom. Great, thank I you. I did. I shared it also. I saw that. Thank you, Charlie. Okay, we're up to events. Kira, the train wreck. Um, what's the song contest you consider a success? And when is the taping? And update us on. What's next? So uh, I finally did, in fact, um, right before I left on vacation, uh, the week before last, I, I shook that tree a little bit. So Mark Moriarty, the winning songwriter, is definitely in uh, conversation with the studio. It looks like they're going to have something happen uh, a day next week or an evening next week. Um, and then uh, Jeff Bolte, who is the videographer, is uh, working it out with them. All that stuff has to be done by the end of August to meet the end of fiscal year requirements for National Park Service. Um, I think I saw Stephanie Stroud on here. Stephanie, did you want to add anything to that? Uh, hi, this is Steph. Nope, that sounds good, Tira. Um, we're just uh, waiting to hear back from folks. And then uh, hopefully things will go smoothly and looking forward to that final product. It's exciting. 
Yeah, and uh, again, going back to the work I do with ERTD, they also know about this, you know, what we did for virtual Connecticut Trails Day, and, um, you know, I, I pointed out to them that that is sort of an artifact that we will have for promoting that airline trail, uh, not just within Thompson, but to the entire, um, well, to the Connecticut deep side. I mean, part of the, the way we wrote the award for the songwriter is they, the songwriter can use it however he wants, um, but we retain the rights to use it in whatever promotional way um, that we want, and that includes Thompson Trails, Thompson Historic Society, the 12 Town Task Force, Connecticut Deep. So it, it's it's something that we have the ability to share widely to really drive awareness of the trail, which I think is pretty cool. And we have do we have any rights to the other songs at all? Didn't um, I didn't I, I didn't specifically ask for them, but we I mean they're just on our YouTube channel, so I I can go back to any of the other three artists and ask if they mind if we use them. I'm sure the answer will be have at it. They were all very nice people. Um, you know, there's, and if anybody does put up a fuss about it, that was not explicitly, you know, clarified in the, in the terms, but I, I can't imagine anybody would have any trouble with it. It's good for everybody. I'd like to make a motion that we send a t-shirt to the, to all four of the contestants. I'll second that. I agree. Any discussion? No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so Tira, when I get back, I need to get their contact information. Yeah, I'll take care of Jeannie Walton's because she's a friend. Okay, because we got to check sizes. Okay. Um, now, Mike wanted to put on the, uh, the agenda a virtual turkey trot. Are we having a turkey trot or a virtual turkey trot? Brian. Uh, Leslie might be better uh, equipped to handle that. She's been doing a lot of the groundwork. We are planning on a real turkey trot. We are trying to work with the state requirements that they currently have out there. It looks like we can do it, but there are modifications we have to put into place. For example, no day of registrations, uh, different ways of starting it to maintain social distancing. But ultimately, we are waiting for the ability to get a site, whether that be Thompson Dam or if they cannot. I know Leslie was starting to look into alternatives such as the racetrack so that we don't end up with no place to hold it before we go too far along. Leslie, do you want to add to any of that? Yeah, I mean, um, the state just put out guidelines for road races about two weeks ago. So we, the committee was happy to have those. We were kind of just guessing, you know, um, before that. So now we have those guidelines so we can really try to imagine what it might look like. We've set our own dates as far as um, deadlines for when we need to have commitments for, from our major sponsors, when we need to have a site secured in order to start moving forward with registrations. Um, our only update I have um, from our sites is that I did speak to the dam today and they basically said to move forward without them. Um, oh. so they are not taking reservations or booking anything um, through September and they can't imagine um, that we would have the kind of timeline forward that we would need. You know, I said, we're looking at really knowing, securing by August 21st, and they said, there's no way we'll know by then um, if we're taking reservations. We're, they're kind of working four weeks at a time, you know? So in August, they said, okay, nothing in September. So in September, they'll say nothing in October. In October, they'll say nothing in November. So, um, so we are at, uh, looking for a location. We have a couple of sites in mind that we're thinking of. So go ahead, John. Airline trail? Potentially. I mean, we have some road crossings, but we've had other races on it, and we would just have to put some people at those road crossings. I, I, I would say that the fire department would support it if we needed some kind of like, again, there's one major crossing I think that we would have would be Sand Dam Road. And it would have to be spaced out because we don't have the parking or the space at East Thompson, right. really. 
yeah, parking might be the challenge. So a couple of things um, in regards to the regulations. Um, you can only have 50 people at the starting line at a time, socially distanced. So one of the things that's challenging specifically about a trail run is just that it does not allow for social distance. The guidelines were really written and it says guidelines for road races, <laughs> you know? Um, so it, it's really, you know, they're, they're picturing, you know, closed roads in Bridgeport in New Haven where people can really, you know, in Hartford, they can spread out and be six feet apart as they're running. And that's not the case on a trail. So I think when we look at other locations, we need to think about um, what's going to allow for that social distancing between our runners so they can pass each other at a safe distance and we're not having, they're not having to sort of choose between that. So we have a couple locations we're going to look at. Um, uh, Brian mentioned, including um, the Speedway. They were a major sponsor last year. So um, I'll be in touch with them this week. Um, and then another um, piece that we're looking at is with RaceWire um, and just making adjustments with them and um, seeing what they can do to help us out and what those additional costs might be. So that's kind of where we're at. We'll have more of an update. The committee has set sort of, um, I think September 3rd is a deadline to know securing a location and committing. So this month is really, um, we got to, you know, get it together this month and then um, make a commitment to having it. Um, a virtual, we discussed having a hybrid option. So we would also offer the virtual option as well as the in-person. So um, I think there wasn't really an overwhelming um, response to doing a just virtual race um, at this time. Okay, keep us posted. Um, and, and if we need to call, well, you've got the, tr the committee, but if you need more trails, meetings special meetings to get people together and get it on board to get it done let us know. thanks karen all right oh, can i just ask when's the next meeting hours or august 11th okay right it's always different yeah it yeah it was august 11th you it was tentative based on whether or not you made any progress or lack of progress with answers for the location which you've obviously moved forward with so. Yeah, I have one, one down. <laughs> yep. Just as an FYI, I won't be, I'll be on vacation. I'm sorry. Have fun. We'll miss you. Oh. <laughs> My Putacana trip got canceled. Can zoom from anywhere, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, cy the cyclocross bike rally, is that happening, Charlie? It is not. It is not. It oh. got virus out for this year uh, they're going to try to reschedule something for march 28th of 2021 um i know that uh richard was very excited about the prospects of a regional uh, uh event here uh in august because of that other window that opened up but august is a full year away so let's get through march and we'll see what we're at and has anything gone ahead with the Teague bike safety demonstration? This was a request. This was the correspondence. We got a request. They want to get in touch with Charlie from Teague to do a kid's bike safety demo. And Charlie had a lot of ideas of people who could do that. I have several, I have several ideas, but um, I also, in the beginning of my reply on that, I said, I love it, but I'm not qualified. So I, I bounced a few ideas out and then I hadn't heard anything back. Nothing yet? Okay. Well, that's supposed to be around August 8th or 9th, so. Yeah. So it would have been perfectly timed for the other event, but maybe they won't be able to do it either. Okay, I don't have any more information on Tackle the Trail. And if she wants help, I guess she'll get in touch with us. Um, any other events? Tackle yeah, the trail. She's still been, I've been in touch with her. Okay. She still would like volunteer help. She's still planning to hold the event and she will likely join our meeting on August 11th. I invited her to this meeting as well, but she wasn't available for this meeting. So she will be on the Turkey Trot Zoom call on August 11th. When is the um, Tackle the Trail, Brian? Do you know the date? I don't recall, no. But it's the third Saturday in October. Okay. 
This is Lyanne. It's October 17th. Oh, thank you. Any other event information? So, so I don't have any official events, but um, <laughs> I've been really slacking. I need to get in an event for Walktober. Uh, I keep getting email reminders and I just, life seems to be zipping by right now. So I, I got to get an event together and get that in for uh, Walktober. I'm thinking I'm going to do something behind the Knights of Columbus again, either a paddle and a walk or just a walk or just a paddle. Okay, great. Um, the train wreck park project. Any update? Uh, well, I had I had acknowledgement from Yukon School of Engineering today that they have uh, the proposal I sent over for this year's student teams um, to help with the drafting of the design for the permanent park features, whatever they may be. Um, so the students will be back at the end of August, at which point I guess they they review the accepted proposals and then they they choose them. I would be surprised if a team doesn't take this project. It's, you know, charismatic, um, more interesting than designing crosswalks, um, although a crosswalk might be a part of it. <laughs> Uh, as I had said to to Karen, because she and I had had a private email conversation about it, you know, concerned about adding another design voice. I think it's better to think of it as drafting services. Um, the students that we had that helped with the uh, pop up shops um, did a nice final presentation, and that was really what they did. They they did the CAD drawings of the the sheds and the the um, facades that were chosen through the surveys and stuff. Um, they did a little bit of additional civil engineering stuff for Riverside Park in terms of suggesting where there might be good places to locate crosswalks. So I expect they would do the same up um, at that section of the airline trail. And then you have something which, because it is a little bit more architectural uh, rather than engineering, you could theoretically turn around and put into um, put into production later. Uh, Stephanie and I and Elizabeth had a, a conversation before I left on vacation um, about a grant program that is actually due this week for this year, um, but for next year, once our um, partnership with National Park Service is coming to a close, uh, submitting as sort of the next step to actually get the funding to do some of the implementation. Um, I think it's the National Endowment for the Arts Our Town program, which sponsors creative placemaking projects. So by the time we are done with what will have been at its end point, a two year process to discuss, you know, how we want to do the train wreck site, how we want to tie it into the trail town, tie it into the wayfinding project. Um, that helps to build a really, really strong proposal for what is a very competitive um, grant program from National Endowment of the Arts. Um, Steph, you want to chime in on that at all? Sure. Um so this is uh, Steph again from the Park Service and um, talked to Tira a little bit about uh, putting together a community design workshop for the train wreck site. And so what that would be is uh, probably a virtual workshop given the circumstances of where we're at right now. Um, but basically it would just be kind of uh, going out to the community and say what kind of things would you find interesting here at the site um, so we could throw out some options such as like interpretive panels or uh, maybe like a picnic area uh, various types of interpretation so we'll give some general design ideas um, look at other and, uh, and see what folks think <laughs> And um, we can also think about maybe hosting the workshop for students and uh, getting some youth input as well and, and kind of shopping around our workshop to different groups and see what they think. Um, so I was curious actually to hear from you all if there might be 
a better time to host something like that. We're aiming right now for like maybe the fall or winter, winter time, but uh, maybe you know something I don't about when it would be a good time to, to host that. Well, I, I'm a little confused. Don't, we have to have some kind of a clear design. Um, what we're telling UConn pretty much, don't we need that early fall when they are starting the, their work? No, no. So they'll just be sort of working alongside us through uh, obviously email and virtual engagement, at least in the first semester, um, to develop general concepts. And then, um, you know, as we continue the work on the train wreck site in general, fleshing it out with, with our guidance. Um, so we don't need to hand them a completed concept right up front. Uh, they would be just facilitating what we're coming up with as we move that forward. John, you look like you have things you're trying to say over there. Uh, I'm just, I'm really confused too, because I mean, I don't know what our concept is. We really haven't talked about it. I mean, I'm seeing drone footage of different stuff. I'm seeing all kinds of stuff and I have no idea what's going on with that stuff. Like, I guess I say I have no concept. See, on the other hand, I was feeling like Paul and Charlie and Tom Chase had done a lot of work that we're not using as a foundation. Yeah, I think that would inform the workshop. So we would take kind of the inspiration that we have that's already been put together and then just basically get uh, public feedback on that. So but that's what I'm saying. What's our inspiration? Like, I, I have no idea about this. I know that you guys are helping us do something and then that's where it ends. Like, I'm, I feel like I'm like, I have no idea what it is. I'm on the committee, but I, I know nothing other than you're helping us do something. Oh, sure. Well, so it is a, it's a slightly different working group, John. Um, so members of trails and members of the historical society, um, Lyanne has been at uh, some of those meetings, you know, some people coming, coming in. So it's not a, it's not a 100% trails, committee project, although they are, they were the lead applicant on the NPS um, uh, proposal when, when the grant was awarded. Um, but it's members of, of those groups coming together. So it's like 13 people, I think, uh, all together. Okay. Paul, are you sitting on that? What's that? I, you I, I'm in the same boat John did. I don't know. I haven't talked to anybody. I haven't been in any meetings about what's going on other than the ones we've had through the uh, trails committee, you know, with the National Park Service. So as far as uh, design or concepts. So aren't you the historical piece? Uh, yes. Okay. But, All right. So you should but, be, you should be part of that then. Yeah, but part, but what is the, the part of what? I mean, do you have to get a meeting or input or, uh, to, to get, uh, you know, things uh, on the move. It sounds like we, we want to start something uh, to do that, but I don't really know as far as... Uh, yeah, when... so, so what I'm hearing is that we need to schedule a Zoomer for that working group because we got away from that when everybody went to virtual, and yep. it's been mostly me and Elizabeth and Karen and... Stephanie, and um, also tying in with the wayfinding, uh, you know, to, to make sure that the signage component got, got brought in. Um, so it sounds to me like it's probably time to schedule another working group meeting for that assistance program. Does that sound good? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, let me yes. just make, make a comment. The uh, site itself, I don't know if you guys been to the Pomfret, uh, station where they built uh, a similar uh, place that they used to have a uh, right off of 44 when a, a airline trails cross 44 they got a nice uh probably i don't know 20 by 40 pavilion they put up over there and what's nice about that is it it kind of it's a it's kind of a replicates the exist the actual building that was there you know some of the features and they added it and then they got some cables and things so uh, 
I'm envisioning something that would represent what was there, you know, kind of and kind of go from there. So, and just as a thought, I mean, uh, I only looked at it quick. I went to Old Saybrook during this whole pandemic thing because that's the only registry of motor vehicles to register my car. That's a long story in itself. But my wife and I were down by the water and there was some kind of a place that had, it was a replica. I, I want to say it was a, where, uh, a, not a station, but where they turn the engines around. Where, where was this at? Willamette? I think it was, it was Old Saybrook, I believe. I don't know if we moved to the next town when we went to look. It's down by the water. It's a nice little park. But I'm just saying, I, I, I don't know a lot about it, but it might be something just to look at, too, for ideas is all I'm saying. I wonder if it was uh, Essex at all. Is that right next to Old Saybrook? No. One a little ways? Because we went to the water, to the ocean. I mean, this was in, like, March and April, so there was no one around there. And uh, it was funny getting out of the car, so to speak, you know what I mean, during a pandemic. We just were driving around, but I saw uh, train, what do you call them, the, the wheels on tracks, just the wheels, and there was a bunch of signage, uh, you know, down there and stuff. So it wasn't a museum, it was an outdoor place. Hmm. All right, I'll put it on a map and send information if I find it. So maybe. So, so uh, Tara, were you going to set up a meeting to kind of kick this off? Yeah, again? I'll send. Um, I'll send out a, a doodle poll so we can, you know, try to get the the meeting that gets the most people. Um, and, and we'll do another, it'll have to be another virtual at this point, but because um, Stephanie and Elizabeth and I have probably been talking every two weeks just for updates on how some of the projects that tie into the train wreck park, but a little less specific about the train wreck park in the meantime. Um, but they, they do all tie together very well. Uh, so I, I think it's just going to make the final project stronger. Mm -hmm. And another uh, another smaller grant that I want to pursue, um, but I'm not going to be able to do it until after the six months of suffrage program concludes. Uh, pause. Connecticut Humanities has quick turn grants um, for up to about five grand. Uh, so if I can cobble together, and, and actually EDC has some money put aside um, to do more development over there. So I was going to write a quick turn grant in uh, November, or December to start making some of those interpretive signs like the one you pro prototyped. Um, so if we can turn around some quick design options with the student team and with you and Tom, um, we might be able to get a couple of permanent markers there um, through that program. And I, I guess I would just want to take a step back and clarify that, you know, the Park Service doesn't have any agenda or anything like that. We're not trying to impose a design or any ideas on you all. We're, we're here to help. And if, if anything we're doing is not helpful, certainly we can talk about that. We, we certainly don't want to, um, you know, come in and, and tell people like, this is how you should design your, your park, because that's not what we're here to do. Um, we're, we're here to take the ideas that you all have and basically just um, put them out into the community and hear what the community's feedback is. Um, so we're not, we're not sitting around coming up with <laughs> crazy ideas for the park or anything like that. Um, what we would love is to have your feedback before we put together this workshop. That way we can incorporate the ideas that have already been um, worked on for for a long time now and we can build on that work and just basically um, get the, the feedback from the public because uh, as the Park Service we represent every American so we just want to make sure every American can benefit from uh, the resources so um, basically that's that's all we're here to do and um, so we take direction from from you all we're not coming up with anything uh, crazy here I'd just like to say that I'd like to be part of that. I feel like on the trails committee and we, I mean, I don't know if anybody else, evidently Paul obviously hasn't either, but I mean, I don't know what the ideas are and I'd like to be part of those ideas in some way if I can, that's all I'm saying. And we were talking about UConn students and I'm like, I don't know anything. So like, how are we making that next step already? Sure, if, if it's helpful, we can participate in, in these trails meetings. Um, I didn't wanna come in and, and take over uh, with our own stuff, but if it makes sense for us to come and um, and talk with you all at these meetings, I'm happy to continue to do that. I would really like it if 
Paul and Charlie with Tom Chase or the historical could put down like a list of some of the great ideas that I heard when we did the site walk and use that as our starting point to say, these, this is our wish list. And then how do we put it into a cohesive? So when we have that doodle poll and we have that meeting that you come with all those proposals that I thought I heard already from the site walk. Mm -hmm. So, so it'd be nice if we can uh, relay some of those back to us. All the fellas forget most of those things. <laughs> we could site walk again and write it down as we do it. If you'd like to do that, I that think we that. have some notes too. Okay. I would like to uh, echo what Karen just said. I, I had a tendon, uh, a feeling that we had a lot of good ideas, and we were starting to. Uh, formed them into more of a plan when all the wheels fell off. Um, but I went up there with uh, and met Elliot uh, Webb up at the uh, at the site, and he took his drone and went to the 400 foot legal limit and did a 360 degree and zoomed out as far as he could. My thought was I really would like to help to uh, give people an idea about you know, what is Thompson, what's going on around here. And um, with the equipment that he had and the limitations that he had, we were not able to see as much as I had hoped we could. But my God, there's a lot of trees around here and you really see that. Um, the two things, uh, again, about uh, the location, uh, uh, that the train station site, when it was there, it was there because it was the link between two different lines. And I'm hopeful we'll be able to, to move into that direction as part of this project. Um, Elliot has some good raw footage and some ideas. But for example, if you were to start a video and it comes in from Sand Dam Road uh, up the airline trail and gets to where the station was, and then we can edit and we can put in the kind of information that Paul and Tom have been gathering about the rec site, about the station site. What did it look like? What was there? Why was it there? And then head on up to the state line. So we've got kind of a skeleton that we can hang things on and we can edit things into as it seems appropriate. And the same basic raw footage, uh, a one finished copy might focus entirely on the train wreck. And on another finished copy might focus entirely on the uh, uh, rail trail connectivity. You know, it's, they're short videos. They're not gonna be any longer than five minutes, but uh, we'll be able to, to gather some of the, uh, the illusion, at least, of movement. Of, of if you were coming in from Massachusetts, from Dudley, or from Douglas, and wanted to head up to Webster, and, and if everything was open, you'd be able to scoot right up that way. Uh, or if you want to come down to uh, Thompson itself. The, these are the kinds of things that I'm hoping we can capture with the video and we're still early on in the process. We got a lot of thinking and editing to do. And uh, just to kind of build on, um, I think the drone footage is, is really helpful and great and um, the historic information is critical. Um, but I think for the, the grant funding, which uh, Tira will be applying for, they're just gonna wanna hear that um, you know, 50% of Thompson residents think that this is a good idea or, you know, 80% uh, of Thompson residents use this trail. Um, they're going to want to see the, those numbers to back up um, your ideas. Um, otherwise, when you get a grant, um, it might not be as strong or compelling without that information. Okay, that's a good point. Uh, we have a counter that will show us how many people went by, but not where they were from. 
So what we might do is say, you know, 3,000 people went through in the month of, of June, and there's 10,000 people in the town of Thompson. So that represents this kind of percentage of, of the population. I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of slippery, but. Yeah, anything, not, anything you know. factual that we can present in terms of usership. I mean, it, yes, St Stephanie's making points about community support, and those things are important. Those things will come out of more of the community workshops, I think. But just the numbers of, of trail users um, and the very valuable information that you have from earlier this year when uh, trail use shot up so significantly, that all of that stuff is going to help me write both of those grants later down the line, as is all of the background work that we're going to do, that we have done already, that we're doing on the projects that tie in, and that we will do you know, from this point forward, and that will then start to incorporate, hopefully, um, a, a student to, team to do some drafting for us so that we actually have something good looking <laughs> to to attach to an application in terms of, you know, drafting a kiosk design or, or whatever it may happen to be, whether it's a replication of the depot or uh, who knows, who knows. Um, but that's, you know, that's what the working group will direct them towards. Um, and they are a student group. I mean, it's it's not exactly like working with a group of seasoned professionals who are, you know, turn on a dime responsive. But we had we had a really good um, a really good experience. EDC did uh, with the pop up shop retail shed things uh, from last year's academic project year, and uh, and that's going to get implemented right starting this spring probably. So. Um, the the beauty of projects like this that aren't you know bridges or traffic signals or whatever is that the engineering threshold is in and of itself low so you can implement much more readily thank you okay okay so we sort of had a report on the drone video project is there any other hopefully not bad news about Morning Beckins Farm. Uh, Charles, has anybody? I haven't reached out to them specifically. I've been including Julie in, uh, in the thread with the emails that have bounced back and forth. Um, but aside from the time that uh, Joe and uh, I think Paul and I went up to talk with them, uh, I haven't been up to specifically discuss this. And I haven't heard anything. I haven't been back there walking or anything. I, um, you know what? They actually did have somebody who tried to cut out the emus, but that wasn't anywhere on the trail. That was actually um, on Sand Dam Road, and they had the person on camera, but that didn't really have anything to do with the trail. Hmm. Um, that was probably like a month ago. Nasty people. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the last thing I heard from them about it, too. It's entirely possible that having a busier trail system right now is working in their favor in terms of the disruption from a, uh, from ATVs. Um, you know, and that's it's similar to urbanism, actually. The, <laughs> the more of a populace you have in an area, um, the safer it gets because the more eyes are on it and, you know, there's less room for mischief. So that wouldn't surprise me. Um, but like John, that's the last thing I heard about what was going on over there. Yeah. The ATVs are a whole different story. I mean, I've had them passing me on the streets. It's, it's been a little bit, it hasn't been crazy, crazy, but I, I've seen them driving all around, but that's not trail stuff. They've been off the trails. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Trails are so busy, they've taken to the roads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're up to the tools and equipment. And first I want to ask about has anybody done started the Kubota yet and run it a while? And then we're going to talk about the trailer, brush cutter, whatever. Brian's still here? Yeah, yeah I'm still here. So did anybody get up and start the Kubota yet? I didn't Not know. Me. All right. David said he'll go and meet Charlie up there sometime. So we'll do that later in August. Okay. 
Now, let me know. I'd like to go up when you do that also. I will, uh, I, I will try and get up there, and I'll try and message you, Paul, or something. It, for me, it'll be a last-minute thing, like I'm not doing training or something, and I'll, I'll, I'll have to run up there and take a look at it. I mean, you got a key? John, you got a key for it? I, I don't have a key for it, but that's supposedly in there. I have a key, I think, for the shed or whatever you call that thing, Connex. Yeah, all right. All right, but the gas in there has been in there a year and it needs some running, right? I agree with what you're saying. I just haven't, I, I haven't, I was hoping to coordinate with somebody else, but I've never gone down there yet. Okay, well, just, it's still on our plate. We need to do it. Um, now, trailer, brush cutter, there have been emails going back and forth. Anybody? I, don't know, I just sent out some stuff I found online that seeing if we were going to do something that that might work, but you know, that's all, all I, all I have. And I was following up with that because it, it is a good idea if we have the money for it. It's just, again, the one, as my email said, was the research I was looking at, I think the one Paul was looking at was a little too light duty for what we need. And, and the one that we need is really going to be about $4,000. And considering that we need a trailer first to even get the Kubota out to a trail, we can't think about spending $4,000 on a brush cutter until we have a way to get the trailer, the, the Kubota and the brush cutter to where we need it. Oh, I did do a little research on, on the um, trailer. I don't know what you want to know. Did you find anything feasible? Because everything yes. David at the door wasn't big enough. Easily. I found something feasible. I've gone and looked at a few, which frankly were overpriced. I think that's during this time of COVID. Everything of sorts is like way out of sorts. But um, I went and spoke to um, the place up in Webster. It's a boat place, but they also sell enclosed trailers, landscaping trailers. Uh, they have a bunch of different ones. Um, I didn't get any information really about any other ones except for the box trailers. I could, I, I thought that's what we really wanted was a box trailer so it could be locked and all together in one thing. Um, I talked to her and the, she, <laughs> the lady was like, oh yeah, that door's um, tall enough for six feet, blah, 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 so she's going on. I go stand in the door and I'm like, no, it's not. I'm six foot three and my head is hitting the thing. So um, she said that you can get the trailers built taller than that. And she said it was, um, so the one that we were talking about at first, is you, if you, you order it, it's about five to eight weeks right now. Um, all the specs as far as the width and stuff work, but in order to get a taller one, yeah, that's an additional fee. So she said, it's, I didn't get a quote from her. We were just talking about it. She said between 4,800 and 5,000 just for that trailer, the higher roof, it would be six foot three. Um, our trailer is six foot. So we would have three inches of clearance and then clearance inside the trailer, I believe is six, six. So there's plenty in there. It's just the door. So what size bed is it, John? So the one that we looked at was for a 14 foot and it's a V front. So it's 14 feet and then it has that V. So it gives you a little bit more space up front. Is that six by 14 or seven by 14? Seven by 14. Okay. Is that dual axle? Dual axle, yeah. She had a single axle, but I don't think that's the... I, I think we're looking for trouble with that because we're getting close to the weight capacity. This, we're not even close to the weight capacity. And it's probably got the brakes on it also, right? Electric brakes, yeah. It has all LED lights. It has an internal light. It actually has, um, like, a, it doesn't have a vent on the roof. She said that those they don't recommend because they leak a lot, but it has vents on the side that you can open up. And when you drive the trailer, the air will go through. Some air will go through when it's just sitting there. Um, you just have to open those vents. Yeah, so if we get a vehicle to pull this, it's going to have to be equipped with uh, uh, external brake capability. Yep. With electric, electric brakes, yeah. But that's, I mean, that's not really a huge addition. I, had it, I put it myself on my own truck. And right. I have it on the truck, too, if we need to use it. I would just question, again, the length for our long-term needs, because I think I, when I added it up, and obviously I'm not at home, but I put yep. in the emails that if we were going to get the brush cutter, with the length, at least the length of my utility vehicle that I measured, I'm sure the Kubota is pretty similar. I think we needed almost 18 feet to get both on or, on or in a trailer. That, that would be if it was attached, attached to it, uh, Brian? Uh, that, that, 
I don't know if there's a way to do it separately unless like the hookup can go like under the trailer. Maybe you pick up a foot or so, but I'm just going, I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know if a 14 foot is going to be enough for both a brush cutter and a, the Kubota. We'd have to look closely into that before we commit that kind of money What's and find out uh, uh, two years down the road when we have the money to buy a brush cutter. Now we don't have a trailer that'll fit. So I have a question. What's 105 inches? I don't know in feet. Anybody know conversion? That's the less, that's the less of the Kubota. That's, that's what? That, that's how long the Kubota is? That's according to the specs that I got from Karen in the mail. Yeah, I mean, email. 105.9. So I just don't know what the conversion is. Uh, about 8.8 .8 feet. Yeah, figure nine feet. They're nine feet. So nine, uh, the, again, I, I don't know. I'd have to exactly do the measurements on that. Mm -hmm. um, I not think that it would fit in there. The other thing we did talk yeah. about was a 16 foot trailer, which the price goes up to about five, five on that. Yeah, that's a big trailer, 16 foot. Yeah. So that's 16 feet. And then you got the, the hitch on the front and the V on the front. So it actually gives you like almost two extra feet with the V in the front. So the 14 is actually close to 16. Does that have a side door? It has a side door, yes. Yeah, okay. How so long is the brush cutter? It's all plot. I don't know how big that is. I don't know. I'd have to look at the specs. Like I said, I haven't done, I, I wanted to see if this was in our ballpark as far as what we were kind of thinking about spending or what. I mean, you can get an open trailer for a couple thousand dollars less, but I, I don't think that does a lot for us as far as we can't just have everything locked up in one place go hook up to it and take it to where we want to go do work. Okay. We're going to have to, you know, load the Kubota up, get all the tools on it, and then go where we're going to go, as opposed to keeping everything in one unit locked up. Yeah, I like that. Okay. So, so does anybody know how, when you register a trailer to like, it's not, the, would that be registered to town? Or how would, how would one register the, the trailer? Does anybody know I how that? I think I don't we know. talked it, about I think we talked about this before, and when Ken Beausoleil was selectman, he was saying we it would be a town registration. But we'll have to check. we'll have to check. That would probably be better only because it would fall into their insurance probably into the right. town. That's but I don't know what we have to do as far as if it becomes the towns because yeah. I don't want to be letting everybody use it. We're getting yeah. it for our stuff in, so to speak. Um. So again, we could get more exact measurements to figure out what we could fit in or not fit in there. I have a friend who has a, um, a, a brush cutter, but his is, it, again, it's like Brian said, I don't know what the strength is on that other one. This brush cutter works on a PTO on like a Kubota track. So, I mean, it's much more powerful. It's much more, but I don't know. I, I'll, I can ask him how big his trailer is because he has them both on his trailer. Is that the price that we saw? If anybody wants to do more research, a couple of years ago, David and I went to a place in, on Route 20 in North Oxford, and I'm, yeah, I'm wow. gonna, yeah, um, it was the same thing. The, the, all the trailers he had, they were charging a couple hundred dollars more to put that extra height in for us. I don't remember the total price, but we can look at that again also and compare. I can go out there and compare. I, I didn't know how much you wanted me to do for this because, you know, I didn't know. I, again, we need it. This code is sitting there. It's it's not good for it to sit. We're not getting anything done with it. Yeah. So, John, if you want to go down, it'd be probably a good idea. We could get some real measurements of the Kubota to see what, you know, what okay. it's really like and get a better feel for where we are. Yeah. So, one, th one thing I just keep asking, which you can look at is, it's that roll bar that makes it that high. Does that not come off at well, all? I had some thoughts that maybe we could shorten the roll bar a couple inches uh, and yeah, just move it down for, a couple inches. For a couple hundred dollars, is it worth to cut the oh, bar and uh, lower it down? I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I don't think that it would be. Uh, it's only about 250 to 300 dollars more to get a trailer that's higher. Which, yeah, that's cost wise, fine. that's not a lot. Yeah, I right. think they designed those roll bars to really take it if you rolled it over. And if we cut it and shortened it, 
that's in jeopardy. And uh, um, I don't, I don't think it can be just unbolted and put back in. I think it would have to be cut and welded. And it may, affect, David says, it may affect the warranty. I think oh, so. Yeah. Would sure, sure affect the liability. Karen, do we have a chance to uh, pursue a grant again, like we did with the Kubota, to pay for this equipment? I don't know. That was originally DEP. Um, we can look. As for the money that we got for the Kubota, we could get the trailer and the brush cutter and we'd be set. All right, we don't have a price on the brush cutter here, do we? Yeah, it was uh, about looking at was about, the one I was looking at was the, the, their most expensive one was four thousand. So that should be the high end of and and that is in comparison shopping. Mm -hmm. That's what Paul had the link sure. for. So we need about two grand, and that was the size of our original equipment grant. So I'll look. Exactly. I'll, see what, I'll see what the state is doing if they have anything like that. Yeah, because ten grand out of our budget is pretty much going to take everything we've got and right. those uh, porta potties and t-shirts and we don't know <laughs> what we're going to get from Turkey Trot this year, if anything. So we've got to be careful about committing too much to things. But if we got the grant, that would that would be awesome. But also waiting for the grant's going to make us like if we go for a grant for the trailer, it's going to wait make us wait another what six or eight months before we know if we get the grant or not. No, if we can have I'll look next into it. I'll look into it. I don't know if there's if it's available or if there's a deadline and there's going to be a match. Remember, there's a match. So yeah, but I'll, I'll I'd rather I'd rather match money than pay for the whole thing. I agree. Right. right. I'll look into it. But I also hey, just, just just as a uh, as a side point, guys, um, I submitted the uh, the reimbursement request to TLGV before I left on vacation for the wayfinding. Grant, um, I'm going to talk to Lois uh, about it tomorrow morning, uh, but she's indicated that in all likelihood that money should be coming back to you guys soon. So uh, what was that? Three grand, I think. Three, yep. Coming back to you guys. Um, and Orla knows when the, when that money comes, it's it's to, to be earmarked back to you. Okay. Good. Lost the trailer there. Not bad. Yeah. So um, if you want, Karen, I can go look somewhere else and see what they have for prices to compare, if that's what we want to do. Yeah, we could just see. I think we're in the ballpark, but I don't have that stuff in front of me from, you know, the ox. Yeah. Like I said, I can go talk to them. I, I talked to this lady who was super nice up at the Webster place. And I looked at the trailers. I mean, they seem pretty well built. Again, I'm not a trailer expert by any means, but... She said that's what they designed for. They already have the the, the tie downs in the, the bed of the trailer. So it's prepared for that. She seemed to think we could almost fit two Kubotas in the 14 footer. And I was just like, I didn't think it would fit two, but she didn't seem to think we would have problem with room. I We would have to get exact measurements though. With I was surprised the brush cutter was as long as it was. Cause I thought, oh, that's a couple feet behind. We can fit that on a, I think I was looking at the 14 foot open trailers at runnings. And then when I saw the measurements, it was like, that's not going to fit. Well, I think it's got a long, long tongue on it that you could probably, probably But is, is that something that can be put into a trailer and then stood on end so that that long trailer might be seven feet tall and it's just going to, we could attach it to the wall? Uh, I don't know. It's pretty heavy because it's got a, yeah. you know, it's got a gas motor and everything. It's okay. Yeah, I think it was like another 800 pounds or something. It was not something you can easily lift up or move right. around. And we have to look at total weight in terms of whoever is going to be pulling the trailer if we're using our private vehicles on it. How much weight are we talking when we have the trailer, the Kubota, and the brush cutter? I know my truck will pull up to 7,200 or so because I pulled the two horses in a trailer. So we do have to look at the gross weight that we'd be pulling. Right. Again, the payload weight for this is um, 48.80. That says gross vehicle weight of 7,000 pounds. Yeah, I think the Kubota only weighed like 1,500 pounds about. Yeah, 
it's not that much. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't even half of the weight. It, um, what well, does I didn't it tell you. The actual trailer? What's that? Does it have the weight of the actual trailer? The weight of the actual trailer? Yeah. Not 7,000 pounds, no. No, no. But what is it? Do we know? I'm looking. Because 1,500 for the Kubota, that's fine. If it's another 800 for the brush cutter, you're at 23. So as long as you're under, say, another 2,500 pounds, most of our trucks can carry it. Right. Well, Charlie's going to put a trailer hitch on the back of his car and drag it around. <laughs> I, I got a trailer hitch on the back of my Prius. <laughs> you can put those horses of yours to work, Brian. I mean, you know. <laughs> They're not draft so, horses. Otherwise, no. otherwise, they're just big dogs. So they are, this, pretty much. Yeah. Brian, on this, it says the um, <laughs> curb weight is 2,120 pounds. Okay. That's doable even with my truck. Your truck is about the same size as mine, right? Uh, mine's a little bit smaller. I think I'm probably going to be, that's probably maxed <laughs> close in that range. I don't know. But again, I, looking at where you're going to be towing it, it's not like we're going for uh, over the country or something like that. Because I had talked to the lady because she was talking about these different options and stuff. And I'm like, this is to store our thing and to move it around town. Like we're not, we're not driving it all over. Yeah. To not going cross country. Not at <laughs> all. But I mean, the trail is a trailer, you know, I mean, it's still, it could. It just doesn't have all, you know, the bells and whistles of something you might buy for yourself. Well, it sounds like everything we need. Yeah. yeah, I think it is. I was pretty impressed. We just might have to go to the longer length once we look at the other options. But like Paul said, maybe the uh, the bar that connects it to the Kubota up front, if we can angle that down and under the back of the Kubota where it's not actually attached to the trailer, we might pick up a couple feet there. Right. Um, just and we need to keep in mind because if we're going to add that, we need a trailer long enough for it. So, so the, is that one, is the that weight doesn't go up too much. It's twenty four hundred pounds for the um the bigger trailer. Okay. Is that, is that a to have a power takeoff? Is that no. a PTO? No. No. I don't think it does. I don't think so. I think when uh, Charlie and I went down to look at it, it uh, I didn't see any. I'll take off on that. Can I make a suggestion that you guys connect either by phone or, you know, have a little mini trailer meeting outside of the next, you know, put put your heads together and your research. Sure. And then bring that to the next trails meeting. Great. So who, who wants to be on that meeting? So me, John. Brian. Brian. Yeah. David, David. David, yeah. Yeah, I'll be there. yeah, I don't have well, to be there, but I'm willing to be there well, if I can coordinate. Well, we, can, we can set up a meeting and we invite everybody and, and whoever wants to show up can show up. Okay. I second that. So how, how about we do it uh, soon, like uh, in a week or so? So if it's next week, not till later in the week, I have vacation next week. Okay, you, you pick a time. 17th, so I'm not doing anything next week at all. It's not there either. So I'll so, look the week after that. Sure. Two, two weeks from today. All right. How's that? Two weeks from today is my inventory. <laughs> I, won't. <laughs> I won't be able to make it. Well, Doodle well. pull it. What? Doodle pull it. I don't know what a doodle pole is. I, I think I know what it is, but I have no idea how to do it. I don't know how to do it either. I know what it is. A Wednesday. Sure. What, what, when is that? What was the date? Wednesday John? the 19th. The 19th? Uh, that's EDC for me. Can, can, can you send an email? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we can. <laughs> yeah, thanks. For the we'll sake of time, I'm just saying schedule here. Uh -huh. All right. So when when you go on vacation, John? Next week. So I'd like to go down and get the thing started to see what the status is in uh, before you go on vacation. If that's if you get time. Okay. Let me. I'll look at my schedule and I'll send you an email or a um, 
a text. Well, actually, the, the, the town garage probably got a key to the shed, too, right? To the, to, yeah, to the, they have a key to, they should have a key to the shed. To, and, the key, and the key to start it is in the machine. So I, I could probably it, just go down there and they'll say, who, who the heck am I? And, you know, I want to go, let me in the trailer. I, uh, <laughs> the trailer is yeah. really hard to open. Charlie, yeah, I, is, is I, the key I went there with Charlie one time. Charlie, is the key under the seat in the Kubota? Is that where we left it? Charlie, you're on mute. Okay, now I'm not on mute. I believe that the key is in there underneath the seat on the passenger side in a vinyl, clear vinyl envelope that's got instructions and the booklet and all that stuff. Okay. I believe, okay. But I haven't looked at it in so long that I, I won't bet next week's beer money. Okay, I'm going to move us along here. Is there anything to report? Social media, PR, outreach, maps, brochures, and flyers. Paul uh, Renee wanted me to let you know that the um, Karen Graphics has the order for those, uh, the trifold pamphlets with the QR codes. Good. Yeah, and I had the uh, 500 pamphlets made up for the train wreck uh, down there, and the, their price was uh, about 20% cheaper than it was at Chase Printing. Good. Okay, so that's all in the works. Um, anything else on that? Is there any, tr is there, this is Lyanne, is there any trail maps for the airline trail um, at the Mechanicsville kiosk? Because there were not any last week. All right, well, those, those are the ones being printed. Okay, thank you. There, but they, as fast as you put them, they go. Yeah, yeah there, was, there was none at the, uh, down by the train wreck either at the, the kiosk. But I keep, at Mechanicsville and um, New Road, I keep putting them in groups of like 20, 25, and they go quick. Yeah, mine don't last the weekend, even on Lowell Davis. I haven't put any out in at least but a month. Again, if you, you look at the numbers on the trail counters, there was like 300 people getting counted on, on a weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It was up to 300 people getting counted on that thing. So that's a lot. So, so how, do you, how do you find that out, John? I get an email from Charlie, I think, with the information. Although, oh, he's still here. Yeah, um, the... Um, trail I'll send you the link on the website. You can get it. Uh, It'll be September before they do another download. And then uh, that'll give the most current information available to Tira when she puts together for that uh, application. But um, it, I'll send you the link again and, and I'll do it right before we're, I'm even done here. Okay, I appreciate it, thanks. Okay, but the brochures that Tira mentioned are re going to be replacing the ones that you guys have been printing for free for us. So we'll just have to, when they're printed, distribute them and people who have regularly been filling the kiosks, if they can keep filling, but you won't have to print them and fold them. Nice. Okay. I think Renee said she would also follow up with Karen tomorrow when she's back in the office. I think that was her sort of last statement to me as she was walking out the door this afternoon. Well, I won't be back in town for over a week. So if we have flyers, she should get them to somebody else. You can, Tara, you can okay. get a hold of me if you want. I think she has my email. Okay. All right. <laughs> She's got everything. She I'm sorry. Um, so that was the trail census program. We're up to 815. We're about on schedule. Charlie, do you want to say anything else about the census programs? What about the intercept survey stuff? Uh, the intercept surveys are all being done with the QR code. And uh, okay. I will need to go up to um, calibrate the timer. That's got to be a one hour block of time uh, from the top of the hour till the next hour. And I uh, just, I want to do it on a weekend, I think, when I expect there's going to be a large enough uh, sampling. But I promised them that I would do it, and uh, I just haven't gotten out to it yet. 
Charlie, do we have any feedback on whether people are actually using those QR codes to do the survey? Because the people I've seen going by the, um, the, the poster on Lowell Davis aren't paying any attention to it. Um, I believe, yes, that they are getting surveys in. And uh, the last communication that I had with uh, Charles Tracy, he was curious if there might be some other place that we could put some. And I told him we already have them at, the, at each end of the trail and in the middle. So he thought that was good and just leave it at that. So we'll okay. see what happens. Okay, um, is there anybody, uh, Tira, do you want to say anything about the Wayfinding Grant Progress or the 12 Town Task Force? Um, well, I uh, already mentioned that that reimbursement should be coming relatively soon. I mean, it has to come back before the end of September anyway, because that's TLGV's fiscal year, unless I'm mistaken. Um, we had, uh, right before I left on vacation, the, um, the all the poll results, both the live polls from the Wayfinding Workshop and the ones from the online and paper surveys that were earlier in the year from Kelsey, uh, she is working on the the um, the report portion of it. I am pretty sure we're going to have everything back from um, well, they're called CHA now. They used to be CME. Uh, also, by the end of September, I think all of these things kind of end up wrapping up together. Uh, EDC recently uh, hired a, a marketing uh, and PR firm that's gonna work in conjunction with that wayfinding as well and developing logos and stuff. Um, it's, all, it's, it's all working together, all working together. Uh, the 12 Town Task Force hasn't had a okay. meeting since, since the one that you were at, the, the full task force. There was that one little one afterwards in March uh, at TLGV, which was literally the last thing anybody did live, I think. Um, we get periodic email updates from Andy or Andrea Perez, uh, but you know nothing, nothing about a new meeting. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, I, I have to get in active touch with them um, to move that Z card, uh, um, yeah, the 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 fold down credit card size tourism map project um, to try to get a proposal over to ERTD for. The airline trail but that's that's all that is okay um reports from neighboring towns i did not go we didn't get it there was a putnam meeting last week but um they're going to send me the minutes i don't know if there's anything new going on down there leanne did you go to that she's not here anymore all right any other business? No, she's here. She's here. She's here. I can see her. Fly in. It just, it just takes me a while to get unmuted. Um, I was at that meeting. Um, they are kind of working on a trail behind the Putnam school system. They're trying to get um, that cleaned up and find out who it actually belongs to. Nobody wants to claim uh, ownership of it, I guess. Um, they've asked us if we gave a grant and we can't find any paperwork that we know anything about it. Um, it seems like it goes along with the Putnam School when they built the new school. That might have been part of the, the uh, what are, the, you know, you got to, the space, you got to give so much space to conservation. So that might have been what that was. Um, and uh, Monique talked about Tackle the Trail. Um, it's not going to be the marathon she thought it was going to be. Uh, I think she was on Winnie to, to say something to that effect, but I can't really speak for her. Well, she said it was going to be a 20 mile race, uh, maybe a shorter version in there, but not the full marathon. There might be some issues with the trail up at Pomfret because of the uh, bridges and stuff up there. Right. Okay. Um, if there's any any other business, 
I've got uh, a quick question, a quick comment. I got an email from uh, the team that's working uh, in Douglas and over towards the Blackstone River. Did anybody else get that? I can send it to you. I didn't get it. No. I'll forward it out. Okay. Um, if you have agenda items for the next meeting, make sure you get them to me. And your volunteer hours are all due in September, before the end of the month, please. So you can email it, you can mail me a letter if it's just on scrap paper, but get me that stuff. I can't wait till the October meeting. I need to compile it. Thank you very much. The next meeting is October 5th. And I believe I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Everybody emotioned. All right. Uh, stay safe. Leslie, I have one question for you. Are you gonna, can you file something that just um, fulfills our freedom of information to get minutes? You don't have to be specific, just who attended the meeting, et cetera, and give it to the town clerk? Um, yeah, I mean, I can, I, I can type these up and get them full minutes i'll send them to you karen first no i'm not there so i can't do anything do, no do you want me to email them to you to just like look them over and then no like, after this meeting i probably have no juice left okay then I'm, <laughs> I'm, out, I'm out in the woods and i won't gotcha. be back to, okay. i'll just i'll send over full notes to um to uh renee tomorrow does okay. this taping get posted anywhere it does. Yeah, the, the Zoom recording gets sent back to me as the host, and then I will forward it to Leslie to add the link to the minutes. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm actually uploading um, all the videos for meetings where I am the host to the town's YouTube channel so that we can free, free up uh, um, cloud space. Uh. So, that'll, so it'll be on the YouTube channel as well in perpetuity as of tomorrow afternoon sometime. Awesome. And, and I will, when I get back, I'll add to whatever Leslie types up so that we have our usual reference to go back to of who said they do what. All right, and I'll post it to the website when I get back, if that's okay with the town. Yeah, I think you can add on. Yeah, okay. Or we, you know, we, make amend, we make amendment, you know, amend the minutes the next meeting if I missed something. You know, okay, that's great. Pretty, I got some pretty detailed uh, notes here, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. I can listen Stay back. To Good, night, Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.